Transmission live from my insurance guy studio. Are we on? Are we, are we doing this? It's uh-huh. recording. Is yeah. this is this happening? It's happening. Coming at you live from the My Insurance Group Studios. It's the Homes and Homies Podcast. With your favorite host, Ernest. Enriquez. I'm Ernest Enriquez with EXP Realty. That's right. And John Hansen with My Insurance Group. Mike Litton with Thrive Mortgage. James Cardenas, My Insurance Group. Why do I feel like we all deepened our voices for that intro? You sound more manly. Just saying that. Coming at you too live. <laughs> so what do we have lined up for the audience today? We had some uh, a good week. Terrible week in the market, though. Mike, you want to you want to talk a little bit about what happened? What happened there? Well, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> well, I mean, so here we are, Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. And the market's been good so far this week, so I kind of already washed last week out of my mind. And this market, the, the bond market's been up two days in a row. Rates are starting to dip again. I have to go back to like February fourth for equal rates. So we made up some good ground the last two days. So still sitting seven and a half, seven and a quarter. Oh no, no, we're back in the sixes. Okay, six point eight seven five. Less good credit, low sevens. Interesting. Making making progress. So we should see that buyer activity and seller activity start to pick up just a little bit. They should get excited again. I like that. Less good credit. <laughs> Let's get. That's a euphemism for crappy credit. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John? Yeah. What would you have going on this week? No, oh, insurance is um, a dumpster fire at the moment, <laughs> but no, that that'll change. Uh, we are. Hopefully, in Central Texas, South Central Texas, uh, going to have a quiet spring. If we have a quiet spring, insurance should start. There's whispers that companies might want to actually start taking property again. So, fingers crossed. Property um, as in like? So, so a lot of the companies didn't want to grow last year and this year. So, it became a real hard market. We don't have that amount in in Texas mm-hmm. this year. I mean, it's not off to a great start with these fires up in the Panhandle, but right. South Central Texas. If if we have a quiet spring, we we might see some companies want to start looking looking our way again. So interesting. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We need need some of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need all the breaks we can get. Ditto. Did Everything that guy said. <laughs> Everything he said, he he repeats, right. right? So, yeah, I mean, on my side of things, it's been been really odd, like just really really odd. Um, picking up business left and right, we're getting we're getting some more inquiries, as I like to call them. Everybody just kind of poking a little bit of interest into the world of buying. Um, a home here in the near future, but who knows what's going to happen with all the lawsuits and everything as we can foresee. Uh, The real estate landscape will probably change here in the short future um, for a lot of people. So trying to get ready for those changes to happen and uh, shift my focus to deal more with helping people sell their homes. In my opinion, there's going to be no change. (laughs) No, I, I mean, Texas is pretty well insulated. We've already got some pretty verbiage in our contracts. I don't see a lot of change happening. I think the biggest thing that's going to happen is how agents present their compensation. And uh, mostly it's going to fall and rely heavily on the listing agent to explain thoroughly to a seller exactly what the seller is paying for, which we probably haven't had, historically speaking. Um, well, it's kind of like a given. It's like, yeah. uh, well, what's in the air I breathe? I don't know, it just is. I yeah. mean, that's the way real estate's been forever. Well, and I, I you mean, question it. you go to the other, like the other spectrum of things where they're talking about like this lawsuit because the standard practice has always been 6%. Well, you know, I, I look at it in the essence of what about the 1% models? Like you've always had a choice to go to a one percenter. Very true. Why didn't and there's you? There's a lot of them out there now. <laughs> Why didn't you? You know. And when he says one percenter, he's not talking about the super wealthy. Uh, I'm talking about John. <laughs> <laughs> the one percent listing. The one percent listing companies. So it kind of his, it kind of debunks itself in theory if you think about like the idealization of what's being presented. It's just a matter of that agents don't have the representation that they have right now. Um, so yeah, that's where that's where I stand. But uh, I did some googling over the weekend googling. and. Uh, Found some interesting real estate topics, insurance topics, and 
highly searched trending topics. So one of the most popular uh, real estate topics was a question that people are asking to Google that says, I have $20,000 and want to buy a home. How can I do it? Mike. Man, with 20,000 bucks, you are buying a $300,000 home. So it's going to give you a down payment of three or three and a half percent, cover your closing costs, and boom, that is a $300,000 house. So you would probably advise them to preserve their cash funds, go with a smaller down payment. So, I mean, th there's a misconception that 20% is required. Right. That has been going by way of the dinosaur from like 1968. So, I mean, a down payment as little as 3% for really good credits, 3.5% for less than ideal credits because the FHA is very forgivable. And that's, that's still a very good rate, a good payment. That's, that's money for your down payment and your closing costs. Right. And it's a great investment. I well, mean, so, so doing the math on $300,000 house, I'm, put, I'm giving you $20,000. So the average appreciation last year was 5%. Mm -hmm. My house is now worth $15,000 more. I invested $20,000. I made $15,000 back. That's a 75% rate of return. You're not right. getting there anywhere else. Plus, you need a place to live. Exactly. Right. And so y'all are talking in the frame of mind of from I'm going to live in this house, I'm going to be the homeowner of this house, right? Yeah. So what is what are the opportunities for the investors out there, you know, as, as well? I mean, is it, obviously, is it still 20% down if you're going to go ahead and get into that game? So I, I love real estate. I have investment mm -hmm. properties. And yeah, you're going to have to pony up. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from the, from the banking world, are you going to default on your house that you have tenants in or the house you live in? So if, I, right. if push comes to shove, I'm going right. to make sure my family's house to live. I'm not going to pay my investment mortgage. So yeah, you have 20% down. You have slightly higher rates. Sure. But you know, but with less buyers in the ecosystem, right? What is that? How does that, uh, from an investor standpoint, like if I've got hundred thousand dollars and I'm looking to do something with, you know, how does that? What, what's the difference in an ecosystem in this ecosystem for an investor? Maybe maybe it's a good time to buy because there's not as much competition, right? How yeah. would you guide me on something like that? Well, I think as far as what I'm seeing on the real estate side is that the sellers are motivated. So the person selling the home is generally giving the buyer in most cases, if not, you know, some cases or some cases, if not most cases, however you want to word that, um, they're giving them seller paid concessions. I mean, we're seeing it throughout the entire industry. So mm -hmm. as an investor, if you're coming in with like your 20% down, you could theoretically negotiate getting your closing costs paid for by the current seller of that property. Now, are all of these homes, I mean, as an investor, you think, oh, I got to find that off market deal, that off market listing, you know, that pocket listing. I mean, are, are, are these properties available just through the regular MLS, you know, to working with a realtor to locate this kind of stuff? Yeah. So I think like one of the things that I strategically like to do and not to give my playbook away is go back and hit, look at like expireds and canceled and look at some of these off market now deals. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're specifically talking about something that's currently listed, mm -hmm. I'm going back days on market um, to look at those properties that may still be sitting on the market for the last six months, because those are going to be the properties that I probably have the best negotiation sure. room on. The other flip to that is like being open to where you're investing. I know, Mike, you're, you got some investments going out of state. Um, I was actually looking in the area where Mike was looking at. Mm -hmm. I'm like, holy crap, like I can get a three bed, one bath, 1300 square foot home for $30,000 and it's livable. It's mm -hmm. livable. <laughs> mm -hmm. What I mean, I you still need to do your due diligence yeah. and look at the rental rate. But when we're talking 20 percent, that's twelve thousand dollars. Now, are you considering owner? That's bad math. Six thousand. wealth in real estate. Right. I want to hold these bad days till I die and pass them on to my kids. Sure. So, no, I, I'm not entertaining. Okay. I mean, unless I've got a really catch heavy, cash heavy buyers right. can throw money at me. I can reinvest it in something else. Right. But right. odds are good. No. And your, your play is you're not looking for cash right now. You're, you're like, Hey, let me invest in the long term, Right. So um, well, I'm, I mean, everybody's I'm, play, looking for I'm playing both sides of the field. Oh, I'm, mm. I'm getting a good cash flow mm. and I'm appreciating. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. my tenant is helping pay down my mortgage. Win-win. Yeah. Plus, well, <laughs> plus my tax write-offs. Well, that's what a lot of people don't realize as well, right? Like they just see it like, oh, I'm going to only make 300 bucks difference in what I'm paying in the mortgage. But they forget the, the actual 
equity that they're building in that house as homes appreciate, right? Heck yeah, so, appreciation and your balance is going down. Yeah, okay, both. so just for the just for the one hundred and one, get it. Tell talk to me about appreciation, depreciation. What's the difference between them? Quickly. So appreciation is when your house gains value. So depreciation, if you're talking a tax term, is the rate that your house becomes broken down or dilapidated becomes a tax write-off. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't have to spend money to depreciate the house, but it comes off my bottom line for taxing purposes. Got it. But your house technically depreciates in what you owe on it <laughs> well, so, versus what it's actually worth. So kind of like actual, your car, yeah. right? Like when you're thinking of taxes, like my mm-hmm. truck, you buy a $40,000 truck, it depreciates. But in like the market last year, my truck actually appreciated. appreciated. <laughs> so, so in that aspect, real estate... So uh, over the last 74 years, there's been three years where houses depreciated. I'll take those odds all day long. Right. Got it. 74 winners, three losers. That's okay. I'll, I'll take yeah, that bet. Absolutely. But the other part to that is you go get like five, six properties, investment properties, and sit on those for five years. Mm-hmm. Each one of those, let's just say, appreciates, and you have forty, fifty thousand 50,000 equity in each of those homes. That's a good substantial amount in the next five years. Yeah. Plus so. what you're making and the difference of you know, your, your rental rate versus your mortgage. Now the market that you t- seem to tap into yeah. out of state seems like you're getting a, a good deal, maybe getting the house at a lower entry point, you know, versus the San Antonio market, right? Where it's like, if I want to buy a house full price as an investor and start renting it out immediately, you know, the, 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 I'm not, I may not be getting the cash flow and the appreciation. I might only be getting one. You know? so, so oddly enough. So in San Antonio, it's going to cost you more to get in but you're gonna get more appreciation. Your house is gonna be worth right. more quicker. Bigger market. Where the market I'm playing in is to get more cash flow, but it's gonna slow and steady appreciate. Right. Five years you might see 30K or 20K, whatever yeah. it might be, versus San Antonio 100. So choose your poison. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I chose mine because I can buy two or three properties for one property here. So I can kind of spread my right. risk out. Mm-hmm. So if one tenant's not playing there, two will cover yeah. my loss for me. Well, what I've been specifically looking at too is like DSER loans. I think. I've talked to you a little bit about them. We haven't explored it yet, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's something that's becoming more and more actually trending amongst amongst investors because it's a a no income credit check, like type loan. DSCR, debt service Mm -hmm. coverage ratio. So that means that if the house rents up for what my payment is, cool, the bank's happy. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if you have no job. I don't (laughs) care if you make three bucks an hour flipping patties. If If the rent is paid for by the property, it's but approved. it cannot be your primary residence. Mm. That's the Correct. only stipulation. Well, so, you, can, you can't rent to yourself. Yeah. It's, it's 25% down. 20%. 20%, 20%. yeah. Mm. And, but, and there's a caveat to that too, because 20% down, it could also, there are some DSCRs that will do short-term rentals. Now, is this hard money or is this coming from no, this institutions? Is, this, is, so, this is coming it, from... It, it's considered non-qualified mortgages. So qualified right. mortgage is something that's backed by the federal government. It meets all the boxes after they passed the Mortgage Reform Act in 2008. Right. There's a, lot, a bunch of different things that go into it. Right. So this is still a bank product, but it doesn't check those boxes, so it's considered non-qualified. Mm. So it's held in the bank books. Right. And they're going to have requirements like the length of ownership that you have to hold it, yeah. um, prepayment mm. penalties. So it's not something that you would use on like a fix or flip. You would use it on like a fix and hold type yeah. scenario. Um, put people into the actual you know, home, rent it out, make your make but, equity. But it is a fix, fixed rate. Fixed rate. Fixed rate. Yeah. And, it, it's a, and it's a little higher from my I, understanding. So, it's, I mean, higher risk, higher reward. So right. the bank wants to be compensated for giving you a, 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 a riskier loan. But then again, you're not going based off of income so there's no like debt to income ratio on it it's just does it cover yeah does it cover the rent if you know type type deal like there's a few properties here in san antonio on the northeast side that Mm -hmm. i've kind of crunched the numbers and thrown them at it just i mean at the price point that they're at just a little bit more right like i mean you're looking at a two hundred fifteen thousand dollar house you kind of calculate the 20 percent down payment on it and so forth so you got to be ready right you got to be ready to do it Mm -hmm. numbers got to make sense and so forth. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's risky. It, you know, it's like, it's a risk. You know, you're going to put your money out there and there's not, nothing's guaranteed. And nothing other than the old half a percent savings bond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so flipping, flipping script, let's pick on John over here a little bit. Wait, wait, I got one more point. And Go ahead. back to my $20,000 original scenario. You get 0% return on renting. No matter how much you put in every month, you're getting zero of that back. So you might be saving a little bit every month. I got a cheaper rent. But mm-hmm. you get nothing. Right. And your rent's just going to go up. 
I, I mean, to that point, before we kind of change change scripts here, to the to that point, FHA. A lot of people don't realize. Um, I'm coming across this, not that there are any buyers out there or any names, but I'm coming across this quite frequently where buyers kind of have this stigmatism of like buying a home that, oh, I need to be super qualified. I need all this money to have down. Where in reality, if you think about it for a second, like if you go apply for an apartment or apply for a rental property and you have a lower score, let's say your score is 580, they're going to require you to most likely put big first and last month's rent your rent's $2,000, that's $4,000 up front, plus all your application fees, things like that. I mean, you're mm -hmm. looking at bond programs for first time home buyers, if they can pay down the credit card that they were gonna use to, with the money they were gonna use to put down as a security deposit, like yeah, absolutely. in the next 30, 45 days, they could theoretically be ready to, in a good position to buy. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll open that topic on another. Just yeah, down pending. Pensions. Yeah, absolutely, no, mm -hmm. I, I, you're absolutely yeah. right. And house hacking. Let's open that up next time too. House hacking. Yeah. But to the insurance topics, throwing it John's way, top Google searched and highly searched insurance question. <laughs> Does homeowners insurance cover lost jewelry? Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> depends. No. Yeah. Depends. Well, so almost every single home policy will have a cap on on jewelry, right? And some of them are set at twenty five hundred, some are set at five thousand. Really depends on what home policy it is right. and what company and what cap they set it at. You can increase that. Um, you're going to obviously pay a premium to increase that. And then I always tell people, though, what I would – if I were you, and just if I were you, I would either schedule a very expensive piece of jewelry or get a separate policy called a personal article floater right. for that piece of jewelry. That personal article floater, what's cool with that is it's all risk. And mm -hmm. so anything happens to it, it doesn't really matter what happens, it, there's coverage for it. Right. As long, and I mean, there, there's there's some caveats, right? Like if it's not being worn, it needs to be stored in a safe mm -hmm. and, and some, some other caveats. But for the most part, if you're water skiing and you're – for whatever reason you felt like you needed to wear a $50,000 diamond ring water skiing, which would blow my mind, but right. it falls off, goes in the lake, there's coverage. Right. You and so take it on the boat and press so, the bell. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but once the property leaves the house at that point, you're better off or you might want to consider a personal article. Well, because the well, homeowner's when insurance. You, when, we, won't. when you schedule it on a home policy, there's there's coverage for there's coverage for things, but it's it, but it, like like all home policies, they're Almost almost every home policy in Texas is not all risk for personal property. Right. And so there's there's not the vast scope of all risk, mm -hmm. right? So it's named peril on personal property, and I don't care how you raise a limit, there's going to be holes, right? right. There's going to be sense. things where like, well, hey, that, now that doesn't qualify, sure. yeah. right? Because most people buy insurance and they say, well, I have insurance. I'm pretty much covered for everything. Yeah. You know, and that's like the – that's the – mentality of most people buying insurance right. and right. so a personal article floater is basically like hey you're that is yeah. covered for everything yeah. everywhere you know? everywhere yeah. Every, everything everywhere yeah right? yeah so but there's also like uh i guess like a requirement or criteria for those personal articles like things like appraisals yes so like on a diamond ring like i know you have to go get it appraised within the last three especially if it's so if it's not if it's not some some personal order floaters don't require it until you start hitting certain thresholds right, right. if you hit a twenty thousand dollar twenty five thousand dollar threshold almost every single company is going to require you to get a mm -hmm. an appraisal and the appraisal's got to be within the last three years right yeah there's so. a lot of ladies with a lot of purses at their house a lot of jewelry you know what i mean so yeah that stuff adds up it does and, and and there's a lot of and, and i i've talked to them and i'm like god you need to give me a list of those so we can at least schedule them on the home policy right and a lot of people don't but it's it, but it's super important to know and if if you don't want to insure them so i don't ha i don't have a lot of my, my wife's stuff insured right i'm okay with losing that right but if you think the home policy is covering it it's my job to tell you it's not you know yeah right. i had a, a client last week actually told me you know she was paying four thousand dollars for insurance and she was trying to get the rate down but i actually mentioned to her that her i said how much would you be willing to pay to know that have peace of mind that all your stuff is covered your jewelry your watches your you know, <clears throat> your your purses, your things like that. She paid an extra three or four thousand dollars a year just to make sure that that was all covered. So, you know, I guess I say all that to say that if you educate somebody on what 
that they can lay their head down at night mm-hmm. without not having to worry, or they can leave their house on vacation. They don't have to worry about all that stuff. They'll pay a premium for it. Right. So makes sense. Well, and right now it's probably super important to cover your gold and silver. Mike, I, I asked this question to John earlier before we got on here, but did you go vote? I voted early voting. Okay. I don't want to stand in line. I, mean, <laughs> I, I asked the question not because I'm going to pick on who you voted for, but on, on there, there was a question that asked if Texas should adopt or inherit uh, the use of gold and silver as a as That a was pretty fiat. cool, yeah. I thought that was super neat. Mm. Like, that was on, on one of the Go ballots. back to the gold standard. Yeah. Exactly. But for Texas alone. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I mean, the gold that everybody's been stashing uh, would now become valuable. <laughs> like, mm. you imagine the pulling in the, like, Whataburgers drive through and handing them a gold nugget. <laughs> like, <laughs> and them just being like, all right, here's your whatever. Hold on. Let me weigh it out real quick. Like, let me get you point zero zero one ounces of of, uh, of gold. So here's your you got to carry your little burner so you can melt your gold down a little bit. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say uh, bullets will be the most expensive thing. The, they might actually. They, I mean, they already are. So, <laughs> but to that, like, to that point. Do, is there anything that covers like raw gold or raw silver? Like, would that again, be covered? Again, there there is uh, limits, right? Mm-hmm. So that's going to cap out. So I can't have a million dollars in gold sit in my shoebox. Again, again, you can have whatever you want in your house. It, it's not going to be covered. <laughs> <laughs> so I should bury it in a yeah, hole, so, so, <laughs> like so, pirate's so treasure. Cash, Go get your shoebox. Cash, gold, silver, the... cash gold, silver. It's going to cap. They're, they're, almost every single policy has a cap with the personal property on there. Yeah. And, and each company is again a little different. It might be a thousand dollars. Might be twenty five hundred. Might be five. 000. Right, and, but they're all going to cap. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I just thought that was really yeah. interesting because we went and voted yesterday, and I was like, I mean, yep. The, <laughs> that, <laughs> from what I understand, though, even if it does, like the house does burn to the ground, that gold will melt. It still be there, but you still have a lot of gold. It is be melted down. <laughs> point. No more gold bars. What you just put up on my stash of twenties. I keep my closet. <laughs> I, I, I mean, my two dollar bills would be gone. <laughs> yeah. like, Again, there, there's, there, it's, it's on there. And there's caps. Yeah. So. Well, and the other cool thing was like, so the markets this week opened up like very, very harsh. I say that because a lot of, uh, there was a lot of kind of interest in crypto once again. Like we saw a lot of cryptocurrencies take off. Shiba Inu is one of them. Yeah, I'm holding some of those bad daddies. So I'm holding a lot of those bad daddies from like, like early like 2007. Millions of them for like three dollars. Yes. Like <laughs> but I saw that. Th- I woke up one morning because and what my uh, Facebook feed was just flooded with like Shiba's alive, and I'm like, <laughs> what are they talking? So I go check my my app, of course, and it's like, oh, I'm 250 percent up. I like that. It was like 148 percent up in like an hour. I was like, cha ching, let's go. But yeah. The other, so, just saying. So the other, the second uh, question here is: uh, Does homeowners insurance cover house foundation? Talking on that and just some bullet points like Texas foundation issues left and right, showing homes left and right, c- cracked driveways, cracked foundations. Mm-hmm. Is that covered? So there, there is, there is never, ever, 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 never, ever going to be a policy sold in Texas that has earth shifting and earth movement as a coverage. And that's what causes the majority of foundation issues is mm-hmm. settling, earth shifting, earth movement. So there's a chance I can get that policy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a point well, zero zero one percent. See, tell me there's a chance. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so, so because because the what what insurance I'm mean, going back to what insurance is, is supposed to be used for is a right. catastrophic event. Something has to occur for insurance to cover something, and longevity time is not an event. It's something that just happens over time. So, and, and earthquakes are not covered on. You read my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I I'm like, wait I'm a like, second. Earthquakes are also not covered. The on ground earth. shifts. How's that not catastrophic? It's super catastrophic, right? Like, like yeah. the inside's catastrophic, but, but I'm uh, in Texas and I'm not going to stock for other states, but in Texas, that's not going to be something that's on the policy. Now, there is an endorsement in Texas called foundation coverage Mm -hmm. with most HO3 policies and HOB policies, right? Right. And that endorsement for foundation coverage will cover your foundation if a covered loss were to happen and shifts your foundation, right? So you say that in English? Yeah, so so, (laughs) so basically pipe breaks and creates a shift in your foundation or cracks your foundation. Covered. Covered, right? right? Like the, there's so much mud underneath your foundation, <laughs> right? That it's 
all that water has soaked yeah. and has shifted the concrete, and then bam, you get you get a foundation crack. Yeah, and so so then there would be coverage for that. And and again, it's it's an endorsement on Moshe's right, Moshe's, but yeah. foundation shifts, ground or foundation cracks. Not and, covered. And, and and it's also a tricky thing to say, right? Because right. like, boy, well, hey, my, my pipe broke. <laughs> and like, well, and so most of the time, they'll have an engineer go out and look at it, and. We like to say that because engineers are supposed to be super smart. So right. Well, the second an engineer looks at it and gives it a stamp, it's like cool. it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good to go. Yeah. That, well, that's interesting. That's and that's a. I mean, these must be coming from Texas because <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not sure what other states. But yeah, that's one thing that I, it's funny that that it comes up because a lot of people ask me like, hey, "How's the foundation on this property?" And I'm not the one to be asking like, "Hey, if you want to get a structural engineer out here to inspect the foundation, yeah. by all means, during our option period, let's do it." Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what will you see? I guess is a lot of people. You know, I know that some of us can talk about like that. You know, doors not closing properly. You know, and it, you know, yeah. cracks in the wall. Well, and a lot of that just means like the foundation just needs to be leveled, right? Like doors, and oftentimes a lot of it goes back to the hinges too. Like they're just not lined up properly, whatever the case might be. But yeah, to your point, oh, we have teenagers. Yeah. You have teenagers that <laughs> close doors, <laughs> <laughs> slam doors. Um, yeah, and so it's normal for a house to settle, right? Right. You know, so and so shifting, settling, two different, two different things, two different things. Yeah, and, and every house will do it. Mm-hmm. Um, to what extreme though there are companies out there and there's some great companies we actually insure a couple that that will go out and fix it and it's not as awful as as you would think i mean it's not cheap right but you can get your foundation fixed if if you have foundation issues it's not the end of the world makes sense it's just again it's the joys of being a homeowner right right (laughs) not to deter anybody out there watching the show today to buy a home. <laughs> stuff happens. <laughs> kind of a scary topic, but I mean, stuff could happen in your apartment complex. <laughs> but you don't have to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to pay for that. Well, directly, indirectly, mm-hmm. rates go up. Sure. So yeah. that that brings us to, uh, we got to talk about this thing that James proposed <laughs> to us a little earlier <laughs> about how he was talking about uh, AI, right? The evolution of AI. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how uh, how scary it's getting because apparently he just what, what was it an article you read I don't know where it was at but you want to scammers I said this is the, this is the portion of the show we do scammers <laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh, scam number one that we pulled up from AI was that a lady receives a phone call that her daughter is screaming on the phone uh, saying mom please help me uh, immediately the robber takes the phone from the daughter and says. Uh, you need to come get, you need to send us money. We have your daughter tied up and we're going to Mexico and we're going to do terrible, terrible things to her. So um, this was an AI phone call. Uh, Basically you can take somebody's voice. If you have a recording of somebody's voice, you can upload it onto the internet and it will, if you have a a long enough sample, it will allow us to generate. a family member and um and they'll be demanding uh money so interesting the way to get around it or is to hang up the phone and call that family member back and make sure that they're not tied up and on their way to mexico hmm. mm-hmm. so ai is being used uh this this what is it the voice replication stuff is it's going to be pretty interesting moving forward here mike's not going to be able to get uh verbal <laughs> verbals verbal why, approval verbal. Why, why do i feel like I've, i'm being a part of a tiktok kia Car theft. <laughs> You're participating in the I feel revolution. Like I'm participating. Well, I was listening to a podcast with Dr. Phil yesterday. He was talking about. Oh, he's going all hands. Well, he, he's done. I said I was watching TV and I saw myself endorsing a product I have never even seen before. Mm-hmm. It wasn't him. It was his voice. It was his likeness. But it's like I have never seen it. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "My lawyers sue him. They take it off. They find, start another company, and it's back up." Yeah, it's interesting though because there's like TikTok channels too on the TikTok subject that mm-hmm. are. Basically, just voice impersonating like the president and stuff like that, and they're making rap songs out of it. And mm-hmm. like, they're getting thousands and thousands of followers. It's like really weird. That new Trump album hits. That Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he was jamming it, in his <laughs> blowing his speakers. Yeah, and then so the one of the the second story is that there's uh, something called pig butchering, and a pig butchering scam 
is when a wealthy person will receive a text message from a random number and they will respond and make friends with this anonymous person that claims to know them from the past. Uh, they will gain so much trust that they'll actually donate money, send money to them, and uh, before they know it, they're up to their knees in a scam. Interesting. So, so yeah, pig butchering. I was hoping for bacon there, but no. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I was just like, mm-hmm. so get get to this the, bacon. So, so the person that messaged me the, the other day <laughs> that I haven't talked to for years is probably pig butchering me. It could be. <laughs> you know, you'll get those random text messages. Hey, how are you? Hey, haven't talked to you in a while. It's an old friend. You know, very vague and ambiguous, and it'll just they'll just lead you down the yellow brick road too. Wow, interesting. So, who here at the table panicked yesterday when Facebook <laughs> went down? Oh yeah, I I didn't panic, but I thought it was very interesting. Did you change your password? Oh yeah, I entered something. They have my password. Whoever <laughs> stole that <laughs> has my new password. This one was not me, guys. Just <laughs> throwing it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. Only well, like two scams, or is there three? We got a third one. Let's see. Pig third. butchering. Fake kidnapping. Right. And let's see. So that's two. And the Terminator. The Terminator. I'll be back. I'll be right back. So this is interesting, too, while he looks for that. Is mm-hmm. You ever seen the corpse flower out in San Francisco? It stinks. You've seen it? Well, no, I, 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 I know <laughs> of them. I've not been there. I but can okay. smell it I through the TV. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. It's well, very. I mean, I mean it's not just in San Francisco. They're, they're, there's more than one corpse flower. It's very yeah. interesting that people would actually line up, and this is from the AP, that they would actually line up to see this flower smell like that corpse. smells like death. It's right next to the methamphetamine so, flower. San Francisco AP. <laughs> crowds lined up in the San Francisco on Wednesday to see and smell the blooming of an endangered tropical flower that releases a pungent odor when it opens once every several years. <laughs> Only those who have been around a corpse would know what the flower smells like. The plant blooms for one to three days once every 10 years. But people are lining up to actually smell this thing. That ain't right. That, that ain't. just walk by roadkill. <laughs> that's in a movie isn't it, is it, is it is, he's like i could i could taste it <laughs> you, uh, oh it's the bench warmers he farts in his face <laughs> and he's, yeah he's like you had a uh, lasagna for lunch <laughs> okay I, oh sorry okay so the last scam uh comes out of Gil- guilford county new what's nc North Carolina. Carolina. Guilford County, North Carolina. (laughs) Sheriff's Office is asking for assistance to find a man who has reportedly scammed multiple victims. Uh, Let's see here. Milton Gray, 53, is wanted for felony felony, felony obtaining property by false pretenses. Gray is accused of using company names to sell fencing to people, getting them to sign a contract, receiving payment, and ghosting them. So basically, he just gets the be- best fencing company in town, knocks on your door, acts like he's them, gets you to pay him, and pieces out. Years. Hey, we have a guy like that in our neighborhood right now. Do you? He's I'm, doing the curb painting. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, actually, the, the, see, here, right here in San Antonio, they had that guy that was doing the the um, the carts, the the. What, what food, food trucks, trucks. Food, trucks. Food, trucks. Oh, food trucks he was just collecting payment to, to and, redo food yeah. trucks and, and to create food trucks and just not doing anything <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like I'm not going to make it <laughs> he did it to like four or five people and then there was a tombstone guy that was doing that too why is uh, San Antonio like, like the house of all scams because yeah. there was just a, um, a, a some lady that worked for the government that scammed the military out of like their four for a payments or something like that, which they pay out to contractors, and she scammed them for like two hundred something million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Dang, that's awful. They call her the Gucci Queen. Mm, now they, in some non extraditious country, writing some checks to her <laughs> own contracting company. <laughs> Gucci Queen, like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gucci Queen. Yeah. Well, the, well, the tombstone one really bothered me though. I that's mean, like yeah, that's, yeah, that's from, yeah. That'd be like opening up a f- fake like funeral home mm-hmm. and like selling non-existent plats or something. Stay tuned next week. For Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, Scammers. Right. Very... Coming at you live from Scammers. Yep. Uplifting. Topics. So we have a very interesting um, segment coming up right now called 
That ain't right. And uh, Mike's graciously brought some. I'm gonna save the salsa because I'm still kind of skeptical. I may or may not do it. I I might chicken out and put my uh, my my woman pants on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take the I'll take the uh, chicken fame for the year for the for the week. <laughs> but uh, Mike's brought some popcorn. Uh, stopped at Bucky's on my way back. We have three different flavors. Hopefully you guys can see them. We got watermelon, the uh, mango, mm. and pineapple popcorn. Gourmet popcorn. Gourmet, Gourmet popcorn. Gourmet popcorn. One popcorn. of the cornerstones of growing my business as I. <laughs> grew up in this business. <laughs> popcorn? Gourmet, po- gourmet popcorn. Yeah, I used to. For Popeyes. Oh, yeah, I, popcorn for my for Popeyes. Popeyes. I used to Popeye and I, used to, I would bust in to, to the office. I'd bust in. <laughs> like I'd, a Kool-Aid man? I would. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd look at, I'd look at the, assi- the, the secretary at the office. I'd be like, do you love gourmet vanilla popcorn? She she didn't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'd hand her five vanilla popcorns and then I'd go grab all your, all the loan officer and realtor cards and then I'd go back and call them. Well, Mike just smashed that one. You have so. never, you've never done that to me. Well, John. get ready, buddy. <laughs> I know. I, I walked in and told y'all's uh, receptionist, I, t- tell him the taco man's. <laughs> <laughs> Every week Last it's something Last week new. it was the pizza man. It was the hot dog guy. The hot one dog week. guy. So you anyways, see everybody th- got to try some of this fabulous popcorn? Bring it on. Mango. Mango. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no, just just take some, pass it down. Here we got some napkins here. Oh, All right. uh, this week uh, I've chosen to bring us some barbacoa tacos. Shout out to Las Palapas off of 1604 and O'Connor. Palops coming the in. The palops solid. If you're a true San Antonian, you know the palops comes in solid. Most cases, just depending on what side of town you're on. There's a lot of Las Palapas. <laughs> there right are there. a ton ton of Las Palapas. When we were Younger and in our college days, we used to hit up. Uh, you remember Mama Margie's? Oh, home of the eighty-nine cent bean and cheese. That was their. If you didn't get shot, shout out to Mama Margie's. <laughs> Mama M- <laughs> off of Marbach. Dodged a couple bullets over there. <laughs> so we've brought some barbacoa tacos, and let's talk a little bit about the barbacoa tacos before we get into uh, John's thing over there. But uh, so barbacoa tacos, Mike, you mentioned. Face meat. Face meat. It's like the cheeks, right? This, so a barbacoa taco, it could be made, and correct me if I'm wrong. Mm, you're, nope. you're, you're Mexican at this the table, only too. only resident Mexican. Uh, <laughs> Got it. Second resident. <laughs> but a barbacoa taco can come from a cow's face or a cow's tongue, just depending on So can the you cut. clarify, are we eating face or tongue here? I don't mm. know. you got to call Las Palapas I, on that one. I'm, I thought tongue was lingua. Tongue is lingua, but they do use it for the barbacoa. You'll see this taco is probably tongue. Just FYI. No, it looks like face to me. Does it? Face generally is a little bit more stringy. There's one thing I know in this world. It's shredded face. <laughs> That's what it is. So for all you viewers out there. Look hey, that up, popcorn was really good. These it things come pop- through greasy. And nice and compressed. You can see that's a good bottom of a taco there. So oh, yeah. the more grease, the better? Oh, he's like, oh, yeah. The next morning when you wake up and it's not like coated in like Crisco before you microwave it and eat it for breakfast again, that's how you know. Exactly. It was perfect. That, and if you want to have a cherry on top, drink it with a big red or eat it with a big red. Eat a big red. Oh, most definitely. That is true San Antonian. So right I don't there think I should you. tell my insurance agents I'm eating these. Now your <laughs> my life, life insurance, insurance will agent. go up. <laughs> just <laughs> <for> every time. <laughs> you eat. Not only does your cholesterol go <laughs> up, your life insurance goes, goes up. up. So and John wants brought- to put some hot sauce on there. Oh, I gotta try some. Well, let me let me let me try that ghost pepper. I don't think I'm up. I don't think I'm mad enough for the Carolina Reaper. So the, Car- the Carolina Reaper. Yeah. So so this is Dave's insanity sauce. Shout out to Dave. I I I bought it off of Amazon. Um, and it's 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 literally that, that sounds really great. Yeah, literally, be, one of my one of my really close friends, Jade, uh, let me have some and left a bottle at my house a couple years ago, and it's probably some of the hottest stuff I've ever eaten in my life. Yeah, the Carolina Reaper one. Which one's the hottest? The Carolina Reaper one's the hottest, in my opinion. It feels like you like licked the devil's butt, and uh. it just it just is not okay. It's like they didn't. <laughs> now, now the ghost pepper one is spicy. If you don't use a lot, though, it'll actually give some good flavor on a taco. Um, scorpion pepper. On, the scorpion guys, pepper. I just tried the scorpion pepper a little while ago. It wasn't. It oh, was not oh, nearly oh. as bad as that reaper. <laughs> no, there's two, three. Oh, 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 that's, oh man, that's gonna hurt. Okay. 
Pepper. It yeah. actually very well made. I'm going Scorpion Maybe. Pepper. Mike went what? Ghost Pepper. I went, Mike ghost, went pepper. ghost Pepper. I'm going to go Ghost Pepper. I got. I got to move this around now. I got to mix it up. Yeah. One yeah. dab of the Scorpion. Right. <laughs> oh, he's dousing. Oh my smokes! <laughs> oh, what are you doing over there? I mean, I just want to make sure. Forget people about know. the afternoon plans. Ooh. Oh, it's like <laughs> smelling salt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, if you want to be a real man, <laughs> try that Carolina <laughs> Reaper one. Scorpion you, pepper. You, you oh, good. Try mixing them. <laughs> good taste. I put a small dab. What happened, Mike? How so are you first, doing? First bite, a little tingling, but not bad. Mm-mm. Right, go to number two. All right, let me go for the, the, the bad, the badass. Hmm? This the hot one? No, that one's good. No, it's a good. The, the hot Reaper. one's a Carolina Reaper. The Reaper one really. I, I don't know why they made it. It just doesn't feel right. So we were talking about this, but when we moved to Washington, I lost all interest in hot stuff. <laughs> And coming back, I became a, a little um, a conserv- conservative on hot sauces. So uh, Chipotle lights me up. <laughs> Chipotle red sauce lights Dude, me that up. That is now. some hot stuff, though. It, 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 it is hot. Like, real hot. Chipotle, what are you putting in that red sauce? I do. I don't know, but those sweats start coming out. Oh, and sure. If you can eat that, you can eat a lot of hot, red, normal hot sauce. How is that ghost pepper, Mike? The ghost pepper's not actually. You're right. It adds some. It's good decent, flavor. Yeah, it's good, good flavor. You got good a little flavor. sweat coming down the nose there. Oh, oh. Now this one is gonna not feel right, but. <laughs> <laughs> I only put a small. It's only one drop. Get out of it. Put a little more in there. There used to be a um, one, a place called a Habanero Grill. Do you remember sure, that place over there Reaper. off of Thousand Oak or Nacogdoches? Mm-hmm. And uh, one day I ordered the uh, a burrito and put habanero sauce in it. And I got through like the guy like literally doused that that burrito and that habanero sauce. So that's back when the habanero was the hottest pepper. Right now you got ghost peppers now in Carolina Reapers. Just wickedness on a plant. Mm-hmm. Like there's an, an unnecessary <laughs> demand for this you know, super hot hot sauce. It's like the COVID scientists were like COVID <laughs> and this hot sauce. No, it is a Carolina Reaper. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. Try this one, Mike. That one is <sighs> nice and fine. If everyone else is doing it, yeah. Let me. I will try. Go in. I did four mini drops. And it's, I will it's try the, the ghost pepper. I'll I'm see. not gonna get up and leave the table or anything, but that, that's not even it. Mm. it all right, it's that's there. where you want. It's it's right. Right. It's that's where you, for the witness. It's right there. That's where you want to be, right there. <laughs> and we there are. How'd there. you get onions on yours? Dang. There's onion right there, dude. Oh. All right, we got, we got two drops. Go. <laughs> we got two drops. What's going on, Mike? That. Tell us what's burning. That is making some beads of sweat pop yeah, my forehead it, it already. Just, <laughs> it's, just, it's not even right. It's your, That's, it's like, boop, boop. Woo. How did that? And I've eaten a, a wow. Carolina Reaper pepper mm-hmm. before, and I, I sliced mm. it up and put it on a taco. It was hot. It wasn't as hot as that. That ain't right. Yeah, it wow, wasn't as hot that was as like that. a little drop. In. <laughs> <laughs> That's some greasy meat to counteract it. It's yeah. See that ghost pepper? A little hot. Uh, mm-hmm. Two drops is probably about all I can handle. But yeah. Okay. I definitely got the sweats on the uh, Carolina Reaper for sure. Whew. Man. Get some onion. It'll help calm it down. <laughs> There was a fad. Andrew Tate was telling people to uh, eat a eat raw onion to like fight cancer and all do all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I did it for a couple of days. My wife would not come close to me <laughs> at all. Yeah. It was bad. You, t- you can take a shower. You can do whatever. Maybe brush your teeth. That'll fix it. Yeah. So this is the stuff that's on the um, one chip challenge, right? Is it ghost pepper chili sauce? Uh, I honestly, or is I don't it now know. Keller the, the one I, I did the one chip challenge and it was spicy, and that was. Uh, and it, 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 and I actually went 15 minutes without eating mm-hmm. anything or drinking anything after I did it, and it it was more it hurt my stomach than wrecked my mouth. Right. I was like, wow, my yeah, because this one's good. You're right. It adds a little your... flavor to it. It's got a little kick. The kick doesn't <laughs> last very long. It's been a while since you had your mouth wrecked, isn't it? <laughs> 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 hey oh <old. laughs> And that's what makes this show not PG. <laughs> Put the kids to bed, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. We're getting rowdy yeah, over yeah, here. In honor of homes and homies, I wore my skinny jeans today. Mm. <laughs> just uh, 
spice it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it wasn't spicy enough already. <laughs> No, I don't know. Intended. Your chill is probably trying to get some air. Is what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> so what else is going on? Shoot, so we had. Where did my phone go? What other topics do we? Well, have we now? talked about the corpse flower. We let, let's talk about this. Um, top. Yeah, the corpse flower. So there was an article that was written about thirty-three grossest foods. See, I can do gross foods. Hot, hot, hot foods? Nah, eh, not my friend. But 33 extremely weird and gross foods you can actually buy. A lot of these are on Amazon. Bring it on. Let's can we order? Shop got fake meat. Uh, All that lab-grown meat. You know what grinds my gears? <laughs> fake meat. <I'm> telling <laughs> you that, like, fake meat is not meat. Turkey nope. sausage? So, so listen to this. And we may, maybe we'll, maybe well, this is next meat. week's oh, segment yeah. of uh, weird foods that, that ain't right. Cheeseburger in a tube. <laughs> Yo, it's we, it's a thing. We need to you buy get, some of those. Oh. Cheeseburger in a tube. Okay. S- pumpkin spice Pam or spam, mm. not Pam, spam. Mm. I'm right on that. A whole alligator with head and feet. I don't I don't know about that. That's like Cajun right there. See, I'd eat some alligator. That's not too weird. Earthworm jerky. A whole one though with the head oh. and the feet on there. It's barbecue. Earthworm jerky. Mm-hmm. We gotta try that. That put that on the list. Earthworm, Earthworm jerky. jerky. We, yeah, Edible we'll chocolate anus. <laughs> Not passing out. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing out on that one. No. <laughs> Just call one eight hundred. One eight hundred. You ain't gotta buy one. <laughs> there is a exotic meats beef jerky, also sold on Amazon. Staying the most, and this is probably a cool one that we should do get is the world's most sour soda. Stang. Sounds like it would stang. The description says, you've seen these in the videos of babies trying lemons for the first time, right? Or you've seen those videos of babies trying lemons for the first time. That'll be when you try the world's most sour soda. Warhead's candy can't hold a candle to just how pucker-inducing this blue beverage is. Pucker-inducing. Stang. Stang. Quite the marketing. (laughs) Mammoth meat. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, James? <laughs> good marketing. Hey, hey, these might actually be really good. Mammoth Macaroni. Meat? Wait, <laughs> rewind to the mammoth meat. What is that? <laughs> is that? So what? this little bit of mammoth meat comes sealed in an acrylic package. Should you eat it? Probably not. <laughs> Will that stop everyone? <laughs> Absolutely not. But take that page out of Jurassic Park's book and leave well enough alone. Leave know. well enough alone. <laughs> Like, so what is mammoth meat? It's I actually mammoth, mammoth meat. It is actually mammoth meat. So you're paying like, Oh, no. So like, like thousands of year old meat. You're paying like a bunch of money for some frozen meat that's probably rancid and nasty. Yeah, so literally. You can pick up some kind of exotic what, germ. That, from, like, yeah. Ma- what, mammoths were 30,000, 50,000? <laughs> I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I, I can't. Try to get an aged I, I mean, it's they old. tell you not to eat meat after like two hours or three hours of it sitting on the, mm. on a countertop. Not mammoth but, meat. Though. Not mammoth meat. <laughs> 30,000 years. Well, I mean, if you freeze you know, something. 30,000 million If you years. freeze something, it's good for like six to nine months. I mean, you're. So, so you might, we might like six this Six to one. nine months, 30,000 years. There, <laughs> there is a Kraft macaroni and cheese gummy. Oh, my God. So macaroni and cheese like gummy bears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What about Swedish fish Oreos? Gross. Maybe. <laughs> the gummy, the, the, I'm, I'm intrigued with this macaroni, macaroni gummy. gummy. They can buy two of my favorite things. Okay. Macaroni and cheese and gummies. In the <laughs> so here's the other one. Strange flavored sodas. They got buffalo wing soda, sweet corn soda, pumpkin pie soda, ranch dressing soda, and peanut butter and jelly. Ranch dressing soda. Sounds he just called you weekend. You started purchasing. Right there. <laughs> I like that. We're gonna have to get that package. Eh? All bought on Amazon. Pizza ice cream. <laughs> we, where were these when uh, we were doing it? Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't. No, pepperoni maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're like anchovy ice cream. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they don't stock these at H E B. But taco truck jelly beans. <laughs> taco truck jelly beans. Enjoy your favorite midnight taco and whole new way with jelly beans. That's right. The Easter candy has gained a new life as strangely flavored morsels. Inside the bag, you'll find margarita, chudel, salsa, guacamole, beef taco, and 
horchata. Muy delicioso. Hey, is that the Easter Bunny way? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Let me get a barbacoa bean, bro. <laughs> they unfortunately do not have a barbacoa, which is strange, but poop like a champion with champion cereal. Got that covered. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> It's like fiber cereal. Yeah, it's like oh, a. It says flavored. it, and it's non-GMO for all you. It's prune flavored. <laughs> <laughs> After a bowl of poop like a champion, you might want to make sure you're around the toilet because that's is gonna come out of you <laughs> fast and furious. <laughs> With over half your daily serving of fiber cereal, all, right. all but guarantees you take a dump of a lot <laughs> and <laughs> <The> laxative. <laughs> Edible survival tablets. Do you want to eat cereal and immediately have to run to the bathroom? <laughs> Come try our cereal. Have you ever been tired of not having to <laughs> explosive <laughs> diarrhea after eating cereal? Well, <laughs> got that covered. <laughs> what about Brock's turkey dinner candy corn? <laughs> turkey turkey flavored candy corns. That's probably better than regular candy corn. Regular yeah. candy corn is nasty. Uh, Kraft mac and cheese ice cream. It's Again, hard to I'm, I'm intrigued. It's hard to no, change the candy right. corn flavor too. Like yeah. many have tried, like even Nerds tried, and it still tasted like garbage candy corn. God bless them. I'm, I'm gonna probably butcher this word. So for all you um, drinkers out there, Jepson's Malort, Malort, mm. is not for the faint of heart. In fact, it's for it's not for anyone who has a heart <laughs> or a soul, for that matter. It tastes like gasoline, a tire, and a slap in the face, and you should only drink it if you've done something really bad. <laughs> Is that like old turkey or a wild turkey? That looks terrible. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> that's, some, that's a hell of a marketing thing. Yeah. Punish yourself. <laughs> drink some of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Salt and vinegar grasshoppers. These unusually noisy insects won't be bothering your summer nights anymore. <laughs> they might, however, get stuck in your teeth. Their legs are kind of tiny. The grasshoppers had been flavored with salt and vinegar to give them some seaside flair. Sick. Oh, man. Prickly pear cactus candy. The coolest part of this prickly pear cactus candy is the box, which has some awesome retro vibes that you really don't see in the packaging anymore. Inside, you'll find a unique treat, which is handcrafted from an actual cactus. Uh, I got to back that one up. <laughs> we're, we're marketing a product saying our box is cooler than our candy. Exactly. <laughs> I just can't get over the, the, the drink, whatever the, whatever you just said, like two before that. Oh, the uh, <laughs> Jetsons you drink Malort. It, you shouldn't drink it if you don't have a heart or a soul. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be better off drinking gasoline. Yeah, it tastes like gasoline, a tire, and a slap in the face. <laughs> you should only drink this if you've done something really bad. <laughs> what else is on here, man? There's 33 things. We got a laundry list of episodes coming right for you. Jelly Bean Extreme <laughs> Bean Boozled Gift Game. We've probably Talk all done that, that one. Yeah. Um, preserved Duck Eggs. Actually, be among your favorites. <laughs> no, I'm out. No way. Pumpkin spice cup of noodles. <laughs> Oops. Weird, but not bad. We don't want to buy it. Let's not no, buy, buy it, it now. Yet. One click. Mm. Edible. Oh, come on, come on, people! Don't you know we're live on the air? Um, edible scorpions. <laughs> I'm good on that. Tastes like chicken. Mike's like, I've had him. <laughs> yeah. He might. Yeah, edible black forest scorpion. You, the mango is the winner. It's yours? Yeah. No, it's the winner. That, that one's actually I think the good. mango does. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Roadkill sausage. They call it roadkill sausage because it's I was expecting he was going to say raccoon, possum, <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> and rat. And and <laughs> Holy cow, shiitake mushroom candy canes. Oh, that <laughs> sounds disgusting. Go ahead and tell your mom that you're doing shrooms when you're chowing down on these candy canes. <laughs> Her reaction will be quite fun to watch. That's only if you can manage to keep the candy in your mouth for an extended period of time. Because these shiitake, shiitake mushroom candy canes are pretty disgusting. <laughs> Jokes on you, mom's on shrooms too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
zombie beef jerky. If you like green eggs and ham, Sam I am, then the zombie beef jerky is for you. It's green, but that's about all it's weird and but that's about all it's weird and it ends. That's odd, but it really is beef jerky flavored with a bit of teriyaki and will delight your taste buds. That's lame. Yeah. Dirt soda pop. <laughs> Did you ever eat dirt as a kid? Get your chance to try earth delicacy. <laughs> as an adult in the form of soda, the bubbles add an interesting touch to the soil flavored soda, which might mix well with alcohol. <laughs> Gross. Man, there's a list of these things. Warhead soda, fruity crisp Oreos. Hot, oh, I could do that. Hot scream spicy ice cream. But uh should, in the should we should we wrap it up there, guys? Let's, yeah, let's wrap, wrap it up. That sounds good. Well, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Homes and Homies. My name's Ernest. My name's James. My name's Mike. I'm John.